We've uh, told you about the latest developments in uh, Fast and Furious, more details of the testimony given by Acting ATF Director Ken Melson. Uh, join us to talk about the very latest, Mr. Bob Owens from Pajamas Media. Bob, how you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing wonderful and just as busy as I can be. <laughs> yeah? Well, I mean, there's always new stuff breaking with Fast and Furious. Uh, I mean, even uh, this afternoon we saw a... A wealth of news stories out from uh, ABC and Fox and USA Today, all talking about roughly the same thing. The fact that acting ATF Director Ken Melson now says that uh, his superiors of the Justice Department are, are, are not being forthcoming uh, with Congress. And that, um, you know, he was really upset, he says. His eyes nearly popped out of his head when he learned that uh, ATF may have been uh, selling guns to, uh, or allowing guns to be sold to paid informants of the FBI and the DEA. But he says when he talked to, uh, you know, DOJ officials to let him know, they were kind of like, all right, we'll look into it. Thanks. You know, I mean, no, no sense of urgency whatsoever, Bob. Yeah. It, uh, reeks of cover up. Uh, you know, these guys, you know, if this was not honest operation that had, had gone askew in some way, shape or form, you know, the alarm bells would have gone off. You know, there would have been a panic to get all the dirty laundry out in the open, get it taken care of, and get it over with. When you have something like this going on, where they try to keep everybody compartmentalized and don't let anybody talk to anybody else, mm -hmm. that only exists to cover things up. Yeah, and when you've got the, the, the head of the ATF, uh, who, who, you know, apparently is not talking uh, or, or was told not to talk to a lot of folks, and, uh, you know, the, the DOJ response has been really from the get-go, uh, nuh-uh. I mean, I mean, really, I mean, that, that, the, the spokesman for DOJ responding to these latest allegations really just should have said, nuh-uh. Uh, yep. You know, I, I'm rubbering your glue. Uh, because, really, we've just heard this, this standard... We haven't done anything wrong, but we're continuing to investigate the fact that we haven't done anything wrong. Yeah. And do you buy that? <laughs> well, no. I look how I mean, how can you when you have and I look and I realize ATF uh, acting director Ken Melson, he, he may have his own reasons for for saying these things. I think you have to take everything. Uh, that you've heard right now with a grain of salt because nobody wants to take responsibility for this, clearly. Absolutely. Uh, but what Melson has said is, is that there was a smoking gun document uh, in Justice's possession related to the inquiry into Fast and Furious. He said, my, my, quote, my, my view is that the whole matter of the department's response in this case was a disaster. And, Bob, that gets back to something you and I have talked about before, the, the scandal regarding the investigation, is, regarding the operation itself, uh, and then the scandal as to how DOJ has responded to the investigation into Fast and Furious. It goes back to that old saw about it's not the crime, it's the cover-up. Yeah. Except in this case, it's both. I was going to say, the, the crime's pretty awful, uh, and, and the cover-up appears to be pretty awful as well. Yeah, you know, we're, we're looking at... You know, I, you know, I'll leave it to the to the legal eagles to find the exact specific correct charge, but it looks like we're talking about you know multiple counts of accessory to murder uh, before the fact. We're, you know, mm. we're looking at violations of the Arms Export Control Act, and basically everybody who had any knowledge of this stuff would seem to be a felon. You know, I don't care if you're wearing a badge or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, Bob, with uh, with all of the talk this this week and last week about the uh, the debt ceiling uh, debate, it, it, you know, it really does. It's I mean that that's story number one and one A and one B in Washington D.C. right now. But at some point, that story is going to go away. I mean, August second, we'll get here eventually, and sooner or later, we'll we'll you know. Some decision will be reached regarding the debt ceiling, uh, and, and then people's attention, I think, are, are should be allowed to focus on everything that we have learned about Fast and Furious. Because, you know, at the at the at the very least, uh, I expect we're going to see more hearings uh, in the House Oversight Committee on this. Uh, and, and frankly, I, I don't know what uh, other information is out there because every day the story just gets bigger and bigger. Right now, uh, they. 
have released so many documents just out of the oversight committee mm-hmm. that it's hard to keep track of everything. But right. a, a stat that really jumped out at me in their latest release today was that you know DOJ had bragged about providing something in the neighborhood of 2,000 documents uh, to the investigators. Yeah. And yet that represents then less than 1% of the total, less than 1% of the documents related to this stuff. That's how much stuff they're hiding. You know, isn't that an incredible figure? I mean, just, just based on the revelations that we've learned in the, uh, the few documents that have been obtained, the fact that 99% of the, the documentary uh, evidence, the paper trail, uh, has yet to be given to the House Oversight Committee, that is amazing. You, you know, you look at that, you look at the very specific people in each agency that Congressman uh, Issa and Senator Grassley want to talk to, and some of the questions that are asking, and information about specific uh, suspects that have been arrested for this, you get the really strong feeling that these guys are prosecutors that already know the answers to the questions they're asking, mm-hmm. and they're just looking to put away their defendant by catching them in a lie. Yeah, so I've got to ask, Bob, uh, because I know that uh, last time we talked, right after we talked, uh, you announced you, you were setting up an anonymous tip line uh, that folks could uh, folks with, with any knowledge of other uh, operations could email you and talk to you. H- have you heard about any other operations resembling Fast and Furious that may have taken place outside of Phoenix, Arizona? Well, so far we're looking at a total of four possible operations. We have Fast and Furious, which was based out of the Phoenix uh, area, mm-hmm. the, of the ATF's operations area. There is one called Operation Castaway, that has come under fire from another uh, Republican congressman uh, based out of Florida, and mm-hmm. he's asking questions about that. And that may have run as many as a thousand guns uh, to Honduras to MS-13, which is a horrific gang. Those are the guys yeah. that really broke on the scene here in America. Uh, they they kind of captured media attention by the number of people they slaughtered with machetes. Mm-hmm. Really, really brutal thugs. Uh, there is also circumstantial evidence that there may be two more operations run out of Dallas, which was where uh, Jaime Zapata's uh, killers got their guns. Yeah. And just based purely upon the number of guns that are coming out of Houston and showing up in central and southern Mexico, uh, you know, it would seem to indicate, based upon just, just the math, that there's probably something set up in that area as well. Uh, you take that into account, you look at the map, and the border's pretty well covered. And you've got to start wondering if there's operations running out of Los, out of the Los Angeles area up in Denver, over in the New Orleans area. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that could be cooking. Uh, there's three or four that are definitely suspect, and we seem to have goods on at least two. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, Bob, keep up the uh, fantastic reporting, and uh, I look forward to having you back on again very soon, sir. All right. Take care, Cam. All right. You too. Bob Owens from Pajamas Media joining us here on the uh, program tonight.